Hey, hey, what's going on guys? Kai here, and welcome back to Let's Play Valkyrie Profile 2 Silmeria. Let's put the final teleportation stone to use and enter the sanctum of the Dragon Orb. Aptly named Sun and Moonstone. I like the naming convention Tri-Ace used for these stones. It really fits the overall theme of this place. It's here! This is it. The Dragon Orb. Well... Right. What? Leone. The orb belongs to Odin. Don't make me kill Alicia! So it was all a lie. If I don't stop the orb from falling into hands of fool mortals, things will be far worse. Is this what you warned me about, Sumeria? I'm sorry, I should have realized. Leone, what are you doing? Hrist Valkyrie. So you tricked me! Be thankful you could assist in the gods' plans. Thankful. Stop! No, wait! <laughs> Ever think before you act? When I know my boss is gonna wrong me, I don't hesitate to write it. That's the mercenary way. Arngren, come with me. That will be your reward. Are you kidding me? Why would I go with you? We will take Arngrim. You can subdue his flesh by force, but you won't be able to bind his spirit. Leneth might agree to that, but I take my orders from Odin and no one else. You know the Einherjar who rebelled against Odin still opposes him as one of the undead. Because you let him get away with it, Silmeria! I'm not so soft that I can't handle one mercenary. You'd best return to Valhalla quickly, before you incur Odin's wrath. Stop it! No!
What the hell just happened? Please, forgive me. I was reckless. I cannot fight her on even ground. Not while I am trapped inside this body. Though I knew it was Hrist all along, I didn't know what to do. The moment I held the orb, my mind went blank. Perhaps Alicia's thoughts took over. You could have at least grabbed the orb back instead of just standing there! There was nothing she could have done. Hrist Valkyrie was determined. If she thought she had to, she would have set the palace aflame with the orb. You did all you could under the circumstances. I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. Leonie was a Valkyrie. Hrist spared your life. There might still be hope for us yet. Now that they have the orb, the gods will soon come en masse to crush Depan. You want us to slink back to Depan and just start all over? I believe we have no other recourse. Lady Silmeria? They are after Silmeria's soul. By attacking Depan, they'll also be setting a trap. We'll have to spring it then. If you're willing to take that risk, I will protect you with all my might. That goes for me, too. Have courage, Alicia. Let's go. Oh, Christ. So hot. I mean, that dirty, low down, sneaky, conniving. I can't stay mad at my favorite Valkyrie, who of course was masquerading as Leone this whole time. Next time you want to try to pull the wool over my eyes, Tri Ace, maybe you shouldn't use the same voice actress for both characters. Honestly, guys, the first time I played this game, I was totally blindsided by that reveal. I mean, yeah, I had an idea. I had a feeling, an inkling, that was going to be the outcome, but I was not mentally prepared for when it actually happened. But now that you know who Leone really is, go back and watch all of the old cutscenes and see if you don't notice all of the subtle breadcrumbs Triace has been leaving for us up until this point. Their attention to detail is just outstanding. It even goes all the way back to the very beginning of the game. Remember when we couldn't get a ship to Japan because of pirates or monsters or whatever, and Samaria told us that Hrist was the cause of this intervention? And also remember there was a lady in Solde who told us, well, those pirates kind of look more like mercenaries. Well, put that together with what Arngrim told us of how not only is he a treasure hunter and a mercenary, but he also spent time as a pirate. Yeah, see how everything went full circle there? Oh man, I love stuff like that. But yeah, son of a bitch. Christ turned out to be Leone, stole the dragon orb, killed Arngrim, and took his soul with her back to Valhalla. So now they are no longer in our party. Don't worry though, because all of the equipment you might have had equipped on them is returned to your inventory. Wait a minute. Where did these items come from? I don't remember picking up any items. Huh, that's strange. Valkyrie favor. Slashing sword farewell? Where did these come from? Bahamut tier? Improved dragon slayer? Yeah, so one of the many, many, many secrets in this game is the fact that you actually get rewarded when Leone and Arngrim leave your party. And the items you get are determined by what level they are when they leave your party. That's why I got them up to level 40, 
and that's partially why I didn't use them in my party too much because I knew that eventually they would be leaving. So to get the best possible rewards, you just have to get them up to level 40 or higher. In this case, you get a couple of experts' experiences, which is pretty nice. I think it's a really neat thing that the developers actually had the foresight to say, hey, we're about to have two characters leave the main party. Maybe we should give them some items to help their replacements catch up. That way they won't be up shit creek without a paddle. Granted, I wouldn't recommend using these on your replacements until you learn skills with them because remember, the lower level you are, the faster you, you learn skills. But hey, after you get them caught up on skills, yeah, go for it. Use these experts' experiences here to get them caught up on some levels. Get on your level. So yeah, you get a couple of stat boosting items here. And more importantly, you get some of the most absurd and overpowered weapons in the game. I love it. Let's check these out. First of all, we have the Slashing Sword Farewell, an obvious nod to the Holy Sword Farewell, which is one of the more powerful swords in Star Ocean games. I see what you did there, Tri-Ace. A little bit of cross-game, what is it, advertising? Anyways, it's a sword that makes goodbyes simple. Don't most swords do that? Anyways, it boosts your Soul Crush damage by 30%. And it has 210 attack power. Very, very good. Valkyrie Favor is a sword for those who have earned the favor of the Battle Maiden. Increases attack by 5%. You can enhance this effect by linking. And it has 500 attack power. G fucking G. This is the most powerful weapon during the main storyline. Without a doubt. This will carry you through to the end of the game. Once you get to the bonus dungeon, it becomes child's play, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, look at Alicia's attack power. 724 attack power. Oh, it gets better, viewers. It gets much, much better. Let's see. Improved Dragon Slayer. 200 attack power, 3 attacks, Soul Crush, comes with Dragon Slayer. The sword known for slaying dragons. Now new and it improved. <laughs> yeah, pretty good weapon. Great sword whose name refers to its power to defeat evil. Wait a minute, Bahamut was evil? Well, I guess he was in a couple games. Love the name of this weapon. Comes with innate dragon slayer, 600 attack power. Look at Zunday's attack power, 1163. So I need to warn you about these weapons, viewers. Well, first of all, let us uh, let's pick up some more items here. Like the Ouroboros symbol, finally, we now have a red training room. This allows us to learn some really good abilities. There we go. It also reduces the chance of being inflicted with many status ailments, just like the dragon thingy we picked up earlier. It's the silver work of a snake biting its own tail. Hmm, kind of reminds me of that pendant from the Never Ending Story. What was that thing called? Orin? I don't know, it's been so long since I've seen that. But now, we can learn Demon Destroyer. We can learn Giant Killer. And we can learn Double Edge, gives you the double attack ability. Essentially, this will add an extra hit to all of your attacks. The extra hit only deals, I think it's 12% of the damage of the initial hit. And it does not increase your heat gauge. But it does allow you to earn extra magic crystals, which is good for getting more experience and for farming crystals for seal stones. Unfortunately, the extra hits do not give you purple gems. But that's okay. Still a really good ability. That should be it for items. Yes, it is. So let me show you just how powerful these weapons really are. Let's go back to the boss room here. Because I do want to show you how to get some really good items from the boss. Also, I have Rufus in my party now. I have him set up to learn toughness. Observation, which increases all of your stats as the battle drags on. 
and Solitary Struggle, which increases all of your stats if people are dead. I've already learned all of those skills for Alicia off-screen. Oh man, I've been waiting for this moment. Being overpowered is so satisfying and fun. This is the only way left to us now. Alright, same thing. Want to kill the orbs first. Also, I have Giant Killer and Unholy Purifier on Sunday. Just watch the destructive power of these weapons. I have to warn you, if you're playing this for the first time, and you want the rest of the game to be remotely challenging, then you probably do not want to use these weapons. They literally allow you to just equip them on Alicia and Zunday, and you can beat the whole game spamming the square button. Occasionally, you might have to press triangle to beat a boss. Just like in Dynasty Warriors. Ooh, low, low. I'm kidding, guys. I actually love those Muso games. Okay, watch this. No Might Reinforce, no Sap Guard, nothing fancy, just my normal 1 HP maximum setup here. Let's go for the tail. 21k. Get real. Alright, Rotted Scales. That's one of the items I would like to get. Alright, let's see what those do. It's a green weakness room, has the same ribbon effect that we've already seen, but more importantly, now that we have a green weakness room, we can learn... Where is it? Dragon Slayer. As long as you've been following this LP up to this point, and getting the items I've been showing you, you should be able to learn Dragon Slayer. And you get 50%. Wow. I'm gonna fight that boss again to learn those skills. And so I can show you how to get another really good item from the boss. The Dragon Rib. You get this by breaking its neck, and it has the same effect as the Brilliant Peacemaker, but it also increases your attack power by an additional 10%, and this effect does stack. So if you're having trouble getting the Peacemakers to drop, then I would recommend getting this item, because, well, it's a little bit easier, and it's there better. There's no enemy I cannot slay. Twenty-one thousand damage. If you think that's a lot of damage, <laughs> oh, game. We're still only scratching the surface. When I said Triace is crazy and they don't place very many limitations on you, I wasn't joking. Alright, you know what? We're not even going to waste time breaking that last orb. To get this item, you want to attack from the side and break his face. I don't think I'm in front of him enough. No, I'm just breaking the wings and the claws. I broke the head with Alicia. Okay, well, that's essentially what you do. Break the head, go for the neck. Ooh, Sap Guard for Rufus. And Spirit Control for Ferent, alright. So now that you've seen the awesome power of these weapons, it's up to you. You don't have to use them. It's completely optional. Um, like I said, if you are playing this for the first time and you would like to experience the game in all of its soul raping glory, then I would recommend not using these weapons. But if you're like me and you've played the game multiple times and you just want to have fun and go crazy with it, then these weapons are probably for you. So what I'm going to do now before we leave this place is fight the boss a few more times because I want to get some skills for my characters and I also want to finish getting um, Lizard up to level 45. So what I'm going to do is put him in a party with just Dylan 
and fight the boss a couple of times because that'll be really good experience for him. And then when I bring you guys back here, we will be outside where we'll, I guess, head towards the pan. So, be right back. Okay, got Lazard up to level 45 and made my way back to the entrance of Dragon's Crypt. And yes, you do have to walk all the way back. So, let's get the hell out of here. Chapter 4, Wrath of the Gods. This is one of the four treasures indeed. That I have come to possess such splendor so quickly owes solely to your labors. You have my gratitude, Christ Valkyrie. It is an honor. The time is right. We attack Japan. What is it? My lord. I beg your pardon that I might ask just one question of you. I will hear it. What does your majesty intend to do about Midgard? You are concerned about the dragon orb. Yes. If the orb remains away for long, Midgard will be annihilated. Whether we invade or not, Japan will disappear as well. Fear not. I do not wish to extinguish the world of mortals. But... That is my concern. Your task is to focus all of your energy on attacking Japan. Japan's rebellious intentions are clear. Their plot exceeds our wildest imaginations. But as long as the orb is in our hands, we need not fear them. Shall I accompany you? No, thank you. So then... What is it you're really trying to do? We know where to find the Lord of the Undead. He'll no doubt be headed for Japan. Moreover, if we bring Silmeria back, we can kill two birds with one stone. Any problems? No. I only hope your priorities between the Orb and the Lord of the Undead are not confused. Have no fear. We go to Japan. Damn, Hurst. You can order me around like that anytime you want. So that was Odin, hmm? Quite the magnificent throne room he had. Bet he's compensating. He doesn't seem like such a bad guy, though. I mean,. Personal grudge against Brahms, set aside. He's merciful. He doesn't want to destroy the world, which is more than I can say for almost any other bad guy in a JRPG. But is it really time to wage war against the gods? Or is it time to do more side quests? Find out next time. But until then, as always, 
thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a good day. See you then.